After almost 70 years of cathode ray tube televisions being the standard, they suddenly disappeared. CRT technology was very, very common, and like many new kinds of technology, it didn't become widely available to most people until many years after its introduction. This feels like it was so long ago, and most of us still remember what it was like to use one. The physical buttons, the S-video, components composite and RF inputs, and that screeching sound that they make when they are powered on. All of these were synonymous with our society. When LCD displays were released in 1997, they were largely just luxury products. However, this changed very quickly, and I simply can't remember exactly when we got rid of our CRT TVs in my house. I just know that one day, I got a hand-me-down LCD TV. I put my CRT away, and that was the last time that I ever saw it. Many people I've spoken to before making this video have a similar experience. They upgraded, and then they never saw it again with a lot of people giving them away without remembering or even just disposing of them. Why did CRT TVs disappear so quickly? Why did companies stop producing these TVs at all? And why do some of us still hunt these down? Let's find these answers together. The cathode ray tube television, or CRT, is a type of technology that lasted a very long time. But that's not to say that there weren't innovations between when we first started getting these TVs in our homes at a large scale and when they started to be phased out. Beginning with how these TVs work, this will be as simple an explanation as possible, only focusing on how CRT TVs produced an image. You essentially get an electron gun that is placed at the very back of the TV. This electron gun lights the display in two dimensions, going very quickly from the top left of the display to the bottom right in rows, one at a time. It does it so quickly that we don't notice it during viewing, and this electron gun is constantly refreshing these to create a moving image. This is called a raster. However, it is not as simple as just drawing every frame on screen. These TVs do a lot of work when getting from the electron gun to displaying a moving image. Based on the signal and electrical currents received by this TV, it makes adjustments such as how bright it needs to glow when it reaches a part of the image that has a brighter color like white and how dim it needs to be when showing a color like black, and it adjusts accordingly based on the signal that it's receiving. Another of many adjustments that it needs to make to show this image properly is how it works its magic to keep the image in one place. You may have noticed before that sometimes you get a rolling image, likely assuming that there's a bad signal coming to your TV. This is due to differences in raster. Essentially, the TV produces its own raster when the TV is powered on, even if it's not receiving a signal. But when it does receive a signal, it tries to sync its raster with the one from the signal, so that it knows exactly what kind of image it needs to draw. And that's why when the signal isn't very good, we get so much distortion in the image, and it manifests in many ways. This can also cause that rolling image, and the TV has to make that adjustment to hold this image in place. And that's why for CRT TVs, they don't display anything with pixels as they didn't use any. But it was all of these aspects and many more working together to create a cohesive viewing experience that makes all of it possible. And speaking of which, CRT TVs were so heavy because of the very thick glass that these TVs needed to have in order to withstand all of the activity happening inside, and the glass only needed to get much thicker with every inch added to a TV as it needed a stronger vacuum inside. As TVs got bigger in order to light every display properly, these TVs are particularly front-heavy, which is what makes them feel so unwieldy, as the weight distribution is very poor on these TVs. This technology remained for a very long time, and the biggest changes came from how manufacturers tried to better incorporate CRT TVs into your home by giving you exceptionally small screens, all the way up to gigantic displays that needed a team of people to be carried around. Innovations also came in the kinds of inputs that televisions would accept, as we started with the strongly outdated RF connector, then went to composite, then even S video and component much later on. However, there were many more in between that were not mentioned. Every change in connections brought much better improvements to the picture quality, color representation, clarity, and more. We also started receiving widescreen and flat screen CRT TVs that helped shape the kinds of TVs that we are used to seeing today. The progression of CRT TVs was very 
very slow, but it was adding up to something in the end. However, when LCD TVs were introduced to the market, this didn't catch on so quickly because they were very expensive and didn't really look quite as good as the best CRT TVs. But they quickly became much cheaper, did begin to look even better, and most importantly, they were a huge space saver at home. No longer did you have to sacrifice so much space to have a nicely sized TV because now LCD screens fit much better in any space. And that's exactly how CRT TVs became phased out and very quickly. So why did CRT TVs disappear so quickly? Well, it mostly has to do with how energy inefficient and large these TVs were. When LCDs caught up in terms of pricing, it became more difficult to justify having something that was becoming outdated so quickly. LCD TVs are more energy efficient and eventually did offer a noticeable difference in image quality. In other words, this was a no-brainer. If you retain any memories from the early 2000s, then you will remember that you more than likely had a CRT in your home that you'd likely hung on to for a good few years already and getting a new TV didn't seem like something too unreasonable. So many people upgraded and just gave their old CRTs away or sold them because of the many people still using them, even if most people weren't trying to buy them in the mid-2000s. But what happens is that eventually, people didn't want them at all. In places where space is at a premium, keeping these stored is nearly impossible, so getting rid of them becomes the only option. Obviously, most people don't regret this decision because they only stood to gain, and LCD TVs got way better much more quickly, so most people really don't have a reason to want to go back. Stores quickly realized that people just weren't buying CRT TVs and would almost always opt for purchasing an LCD TV instead, so they stopped carrying them at all and tried to offload whatever inventory they had. My family just shipped all of their CRTs away, and then those people just eventually gave them away when they received hand-me-down LCDs, and nobody had looked back. Honestly, I never even noticed that we didn't have a single CRT left until I decided that I wanted to get into retro gaming. Why did companies stop producing CRTs then? Well, this technology just wasn't appealing to many because it felt old, and it was old, so most people found many benefits to buying an LCD over a CRT. Not to mention that it became a lot cheaper to manufacture LCDs. By the early to mid-2000s, manufacturers improved their manufacturing processes in order to produce them much more quickly, much more efficiently, and much more affordably. So LCDs did eventually become competitively priced and even cheaper than buying a CRT TV. So if LCDs were so much more popular because they were more energy efficient, occupied less space, were widely available, had much better picture quality, didn't have the buzzing noise that CRTs do, were reasonably priced, and were cheaper to make on top of it all, then it's clear that the demand isn't there for these TVs, so there's no reason to keep making them. Most people don't miss these TVs, and certainly wouldn't prefer going back to using them to this day, of course. Why do some people still want these? Well, it happens to be because retro games from the 6th generation and below were designed to look their best on a CRT TV, which means that if you want to game on original hardware, you will likely get a better experience on a CRT TV that already takes every analog input that your retro systems support. And what makes them more ideal is that these TVs have almost no lag at all when you press a button on your controller, then reaches your console, then the TV, and it displays. LCDs, especially later on, introduce a lot more lag as there is far too much processing happening between the controller and when it shows an image on your display. But CRTs feel more responsive for these retro consoles. So it's also great because a lot of retro games and consoles run at varying resolutions that don't translate very well to a lot of modern flat screens. This is already a very niche use case, and lots of people can't really justify putting these CRTs in their homes. But even more niche is hunting one of these down just to watch VHS tapes and such. So some people use upscalers, which allow you to get a decent image onto your flat screen TV. But a good upscaler also introduces little to no lag, which makes these games much more playable. And while these have gotten so much cheaper over the course of the last five years or so, a decent CRT is still more affordable and requires less setup, depending on what TV you're looking for. And there have been tons of reports of people just finding CRTs for free, but I haven't been so lucky. Free is better than the cheapest upscaler I would recommend, as these can run you $139. But you're not only spending $139, you need to use good cables with your upscalers as you want to feed it the cleanest signal possible to upscale. And they can be cheap for some consoles, but for some other ones, they are quite expensive, and I do consider this to be non 
non-negotiable. These retro upscalers are super interesting and definitely deserve their own video, so subscribe for when that does happen. Regardless, neither of these methods of playing your retro games are incorrect, because it just depends on what you want. I own both methods, and I actually use my upscaler way more because of the convenience of just using it on my setup where I cannot fit the CRT that I purchased. So ultimately, this is considered to be obsolete technology, and flat screen TVs evolved in many ways, going from LCD to many different types of panels like IPS, then eventually going up to OLED, which is considered to be the best in regards to image quality. On top of that, you can have much bigger TVs in your setup without it taking up any additional space on the Z-axis, so no one without a very niche use case has a use for them, really. And while it is close to impossible that any manufacturers will come out of the woodworks to start producing CRTs again, this is technology that some people still find use for today. So you can't buy a CRT at your typical store anymore, and that's been the case for quite a while. CRTs will likely never go back in circulation, but that's okay. They disappeared very quickly, being phased out before we even blinked. But this is technology that's very nostalgic to me and many others. But they do have some genuine uses even to this day. Meanwhile, flat screens will only continue to improve as manufacturers constantly look for ways to innovate and develop new technology for these to overcome the very saturated flat screen TV market. This was a fun mini documentary to work on. However, I really do intend on following up on talking about retro upscalers in the future. So stick around for that mini documentary. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your suggestions in the comments for future bite-sized documentaries. And until next time.